Hi, I'm Nick with Calibrated Power, DuramaxTuner.com. I want to talk to you about drive pressure, and more specifically, about the L5P. So we've been getting a lot of questions lately about the L5P Stell 64 turbocharger versus the STR. What's different? Well, if you read the product descriptions, you'll see the turbine side is different. More specifically, the turbine wheel and the nozzle assembly. Okay, so how do those things fit in? In front of me, I have an L5P exhaust housing. All the exhaust in the truck goes up the manifolds and comes into this exhaust housing and drives the turbine. So the turbine basically sits inside the exhaust housing like this and has all that velocity, heat, and pressure acted on it in order to spin the compressor wheel, which makes boost for the engine. So what's different between these two? Well, one has a larger turbine section. The Stealth 64 has a larger turbine and it has a larger nozzle ring. What's larger? The inducer. So if if I hold these two turbines next to each other, the inducer is the largest part of the turbine, and the inducer basically dictates how much exhaust the turbine section can swallow uh, as it's operating. Uh, the Stell 64 has a larger turbine in diameter and also in the, the width section of the inducer. It's able to have that larger section because we use our own proprietary nozzle ring. The STR does not. It has a stockish size. What's different between those two nozzle rings? Well, the stock nozzle ring, which is used on the STR, has a width of about nine millimeters. And that nine millimeters, all the exhaust in the engine has to flow through that. And you'll see these veins move. They change basically how large that nozzle is that the exhaust flows through. But in the end, the nozzle width is nine millimeters. That's maximum. On our Stell 64, the nozzle width maximum is 12 millimeters, so significantly larger. You also have, of course, the VG actuation and ability to change the, the nozzle attitude on the turbine. Okay, cool story. What does it mean in reality? Well, if you've been around turbocharging and diesels for any length of time, you know that that drive to boost ratio is important. How much drive pressure does it take how much to make how much boost? And if you can make it one to one, that's awesome. That means that for every 10 pounds of drive pressure, you can make 10 pounds of boost. On your standard L5P max effort truck, so we're talking push to the moon, with a stock turbine section, you're gonna see on the STR a drive pressure of roughly 60 pounds for a boost pressure of about 40 pounds. That doesn't take into account the emissions equipment. Emissions equipment will add another 15 PSI on top of that in back pressure for the whole system. So if you were to measure total pressure in the turbine section, you'd see that 60 pounds plus 15 to 20, depending on how hard, you, how hard you're pushing the thing, of, of DPF pressure. So you may see up to 75 pounds of pressure in the exhaust system. With the L5P Stell 64, with the upgraded nozzle ring and the upgraded turbine, you're gonna see drive pressure go considerably lower. So instead of making 60 pounds of drive pressure to make 40 pounds of boost, now we're gonna make 41, 42 pounds of drive pressure to make 40 pounds of boost. Wow, Nick, that's significant. Yes, it is significant. That's why we did it. So you're dropping 20 pounds of drive pressure. Hmm, didn't he just say 20 pounds of drive pressure is what the DPF system makes? Yeah, roughly. So 15 to 20 in the DPF. So if I'm doing the math right, the nozzle and turbine upgrade on the L5P Stell 64 is roughly worth what deleting the exhaust would be worth. I think that's a fair assessment. So if you're gauging what the value is between these two, know that when you cut drive pressure, you improve the engine's ability to make power. How much power? Well, about 15 horsepower difference between the two. That might not seem significant to you. I'll let you be the judge of that. The harder you push the truck, the more that gap widens. So at 400 horsepower, you're not gonna see as much of a gap. As you get towards the bleeding edge of performance, you start to see the gap widen and you start to see the stock nozzle ring choke up where our nozzle ring has more flow and doesn't choke up as easily. Okay, so now you know the difference between the two. As you're making your buying decision for which turbocharger do I buy for my L5P, which one do I want? Well, if you're not pushing the truck to the bleeding edge, if you are uh, not trying to get the most out of your Stealth 64, right? Like, you're not trying to get that 600, 650 horsepower. You just want a replacement turbocharger that has an upgraded wheel that's going to you know, be a little more efficient than stock under high load and is basically going to do everything the stock turbocharger does and a little bit better 
the STR is a great addition for you. You want to make an extra 50 horsepower over stock, this is your guy. If you're looking for the best match set of components we can possibly put together for a 64 millimeter turbo, then consider the Stealth 64. Okay, it's got the upgraded turbine side to match the compressor side so the drive pressures are balanced throughout that high load operation. We sell this turbocharger as a 650 rear wheel horsepower capable unit. If you want to push it to that level and you intend to do so regularly and you want the truck to be reliable, well then you want the one with the upgraded turbine. Of course, this video is just meant to be a guide to kind of get you primed and get you to understand what those differences are. We'd love to talk to you in person about your truck specifically. Give us a call, 815-568-7920. We're always by the phone, happy to help.